Liberty Township, Ohio. I am headed your way Friday, February 16th and Saturday, February 17th. Winnipeg, my first time headed your way. I'll be there Friday, March 1st and Saturday, March 2nd. Omaha, we're going to do it this time. I promise you, last time we got our flights canceled. This time, we're taking a straight shot. I'll be there Friday, March 29th and Saturday, March 30th. Columbus, Ohio, I'm fired up to head your way. Never been there my first time coming to your beautiful city. I'll be there Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. Los Angeles, I'm excited to announce that I'm part of the Netflix is a Joke Festival. I have my own show Sunday, May 12th at the Bourbon Room. You guys ask me, how come you're not on Netflix? Well, here's a chance to sell this thing out and show them why I should be. Get your tickets now. Don't wait. All tickets available at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I'm going to start this episode like I start them all by saying thank you. Thank you to everyone who listens. Thank you for everyone who watches. Please subscribe. And if you got to have more, then you got to check out our Patreon. It's called the Honeydew with y'all, and it is this show with y'all. And y'all take this show to a completely different level. It's the wildest show on Patreon. I will say that. And it's it's a cup of coffee. All right. Subscribe to it. And please, if you haven't already, watch The Way Back. It's my new podcast. It's right here on YouTube where you can get the honeydew. It's free. All that good stuff. It's a really fun little podcast. It's like 20-minute episodes, 25-minute episodes with some of your favorite people and podcasting. All right. And if you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, I am telling you and Feaster Nation will tell you that the Crab Feast podcast is still one of the best comedy podcasts to put on and listen to. It's all the people you know and love in comedy with different stories than you're hearing on these shows. All right. So check that out as well. Uh, For tickets, go to ryansickler.com. Come see me on tour if I'm in your town when you're around. All right. That is the biz. You guys know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers, and I am very excited to have this guest on today. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, please welcome Shane Torres. <laughs> welcome to the Honeydew <laughs> Show. Thank you, man. Yeah. Good you still got it, baby. It's been a minute. I'm trying, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm still here. Better with age. <laughs> yeah, this is a great Crab Feast episode right here to yeah, go listen to. That was a while ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus. Well, it's great to see you, brother. It's good to see you, man. Thanks for having me. Um, Thank you for being here. And please, before we get into whatever we're going to get into, plug, promote everything and anything. All all of it. Okay. It's uh, shaneuscomedian.com. All tour dates there. I'm always on the road. Shane Torres across all social platforms. And then I have the podcast with Kyle Kinane called No Accounting for Taste, where we defend things people seem to shit on for no reason. So it's right in my wheelhouse. And then the big thing I'm here promoting is I got a new special coming out, The Blue Eyed Mexican, produced by Burton Lee and Kreischer. Uh, it'll be on YouTube December 10th. And uh, that's the big thing. I need you guys to see look, it. So. Look, well, let's talk about it for yeah. a second because I love that that you guys are doing this. I love that Tom and Bert are doing this for people. Like, it's so smart. I know Jeff Tate's going to have a special on Tom's, I believe. One of those channels. Yeah, yeah. one of those channels, I think. Um Or at least that's the idea. And I think it's so smart because everyone that thinks you need an Amazon or a Netflix or a Hulu or, 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 you know, or even build your own YouTube, they're they're not wrong at all. But there's this whole thing where these guys have built an empire, this whole YMH thing. They've got over a million subscribers and your special going on these channels. It's a direct shot to very specific diehard comedy fans. It doesn't go into a Hulu or an Amazon where, you know, 20% of the audience might be there for true crime. And watching or, Res Dogs or whatever. Right, kind. Or yeah, like documentaries good, yeah, yeah. or there's so many other things out there to see. So it's specific to comedy fans. It's it's also these podcasters, they're the best fans in the world. The diehard. They love you, man. They're, like they really do. Me, I mean, like they love you. Like they, if you have yeah. one, yep. they I, I hear the from the best. same people. Every week, every Monday, I know people are listening to that. They're the I, best. Yeah, yeah. Um, so good for you. Congrats, Thanks, man. On the special. Yeah, yeah. Burton Lee and are putting it out. Um, 
It'll be available where? Uh, on YouTube, mine and Burt Cry- Bert Crash's YouTube channel as well as my YouTube channel. So Shane Torres. Uh, and it's December 10th. Big day. I'm gearing up trying to. So, I mean, I think it'll already be out by the time this airs. Mm-hmm. But uh, please but check go it watch. Out. Yeah. Definitely go yeah, watch. Yeah. Um, trying to, you know, I think I made something. I'm not the type to brag about my shit. I don't. Th- I think I'm good. Whatever. You but can, I am proud. It's okay. I was going to say. I am proud of my piece of work. So okay I got very proud. proud. Of, yeah. Good. Yeah. And that's you like, should be. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put it up against anyone's. Like I am proud of it. I'm not saying it, but it, it's good. Check it out. I think you'll like it. It's a little different. So, All right. Yeah. And we did it in a different space in a different kind of way, and it doesn't look like every special. There's like it's not a big theater. It's kind of nice and tight. It was a small, cool room, and uh, uh, Jeff Tomsick directed it, and. Jordan, uh, Jordan, uh, God damn it, why can't Jordan Levy shot it? It's like it looks great. It looks different. I think when people see it, they'll be like, "This is a bit different than here's this giant act in this giant theater." Like, so I hope you like it. Hope you know, like, come to it. I just need you to come to it. <laughs> well, you can tell I'm not great at plugging myself, I, dude. Yeah. Nobody likes this part. Yeah, uh, Bert, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, guy, this guy likes it. Yeah, it right? likes yeah, yeah, yeah. It He's good Bert at it. Kreiser, if you haven't thought of it, you should be oh. selling mud flaps out there I'm, all over. Come on, I'm going to text him and Leanne after for real. The, yeah, that should know, be like Sigler says. You, you think that's perfect? I want ten right? percent of your mud flap cut. <laughs> Okay, I just want ten percent of the of your, mud give flap. Give me ten percent of your mud cut. flap. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that; would be great. Mud It'd be flaps. sick. Yeah. Truckers everywhere. Yeah. That's the new Yosemite yeah. sand. And he already bro. did the. And he already did the drive-in tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. great. Truckers yeah. around the country be like, <laughs> how much does it cost? How much does it cost to make mud flaps? I don't know, Good but guy. Burke could figure it yeah, out. Yeah, he he figures everything mm-hmm. out. That guy's smart. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about you because I know yeah. what we're going to get to. But yeah. before we get to that, um, a little bit about you, where you're from, parents, brothers, sisters, things like that okay. growing up. Um, like broad strokes, my, uh, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, uh, south side. Um, but uh, I haven't lived there in 20 years. So I guess I'm like from all over a little bit. And then uh, my folks, my mom was from Ireland. My dad was from second generation mexican american maybe third i don't know and then i got two brothers um older and younger i'm right in the middle and we really couldn't be more different than one another all same parents yeah yeah Yeah. all same parents um uh they're very uh it's interesting in this way of like we all look exactly alike and not alike at all like they're both like we have the same kind of face but they're both like you all look like a distorted version yeah, of each like, other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A little bit like um, <laughs> they look like if you stare at me long enough, you'll see my older brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, there he is. Yeah, there yeah, 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 yeah. But but they all they both look like they have <laughs> they have like much darker. They have like they lean more towards the Mexican side. They have darker oh, skin you. and darker eyes and darker hair. This is the blue eyed. What is it called? The blue eyed Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, we want something Googleable. Yeah. For it. Can yeah. you speak Spanish? No, no. no. Okay. I think it was my grandparents spoke it. And I think my dad understood it, but it was that time. And I know that people really know this is like, there was a time where it was more important for people to assimilate if they were from another country than be like Latino openly in public. Like my grandparents never spoke Spanish in public. Like that was is like, that right? yeah. Like, cause it was like, you don't, you want to be like them. You don't want to come here and like, we look, they won't, um, it's Texas. It's the South. So it's a little different, I think. But it's like, it was one of these things like, no, we don't, we, we assimilate. We learn, like, you know, like my great parent, you learn the language. You don't, yeah. like that kind of shit. And it's you like, speak it's English like, outside. Yeah. yeah. And, you whisper Spanish yeah. inside. <laughs> and, it's, and it's true. So it's kind of like a detriment to me. I would love to learn how to speak Hell Spanish. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd love to do it like a Latino comedy jam and surprise everyone. But <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a good, that'd be a good move for yeah. me. Yeah. Whole new um, market. So what did your dad do? Um, I kind of wish I knew, but oh, is that right? He was like, um, was he absent father? Was he? Well, he around? was there. No, like it's weird. So to be fair, it's like, um, he was there till we were like, tw- I was like eleven or twelve, and then he kind of like just couldn't get his shit together, and so I think my mom wrote it as long as she could with him, and then was like, he's fucking up money, he's fucking up everything, he can't. Work. He tried to be a salesman, he sold like 
roofing shit in Texas and like other things like that. But he just, I put it in my way of like, my father is, was a decent dude, but just could not meet his responsibilities as a man. And, uh, like short on money, short on, you know, like he just, he was that kind of dude. If if he had $2, dude, he thought he had 50 and he spent like that. It was like a dangerous person to be. Uh, and he was, Good guy, I love my dad, but like ju- I have a lot of issues with that. Yeah, that shit. And he's um, uh, yeah, he just couldn't do it. You know, like he was like, no, he wasn't a, he, you know, when someone is just kind of seems like um, like beaten, like they've lost, like they're not into trying anymore. Just defeated. Yeah, they've had their heart broken too many yeah. times. I think that was like kind of what my father like. He just never kind of found his footing in the world. I see. Yeah, so it's kind of um. So your mom took you guys then? She um, sort of get you away or he or bounced? He They split. They did. They, they, they divorced. Okay. But like it wasn't like a dramatic thing. Like, um, well, I mean, it was, but it wasn't like we didn't take off in the middle of the night. It wasn't like a J-Lo movie or anything. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was just like, it wasn't, it wasn't enough or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The other blue-eyed Mexican. I think she's Puerto yeah, Rican. I was going to say. <laughs> uh, um, but it was one of those things that like, and then he couldn't – he's never got it to fucking gather. I don't like – What do you mean never? Is he is he still alive? No, they're both dead. Yeah. They both are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So – Gunfight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who died last? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. died last? My mom through sheer tyranny of will. <laughs> Wait, so you say he never got it together. So like he leaves he, like, your life when he's around 12. Does he leave? Like does he go out of Texas? He goes – no, he stays in Texas, but he's like – not very pre. This is like kind of heartbreaking, but I remember like he was just lost. Dude. Like my mom was lost. We were all like, I liken it to like we were all tethered to one another. Like our ship went down and we tied ourselves together so nobody floated away, but we're all still in the sea in the middle of the night. Like, and everybody is like looking for any, anything to hold on to. So he, you know, he drifted out for a while and he was in and out. Like I would see him like, I can't really put a number on it, but I would say like sometimes twice a year and then sometimes like every other, you know, every month, you know, like. And when you're seeing him, are you It's going very to, erratic is what it is. Like. Are you going to his place? Is he coming so, by the house? Are you going to do things together? Yeah, well, like there dinner? was like, like. This is one moment where like, I think I might have told this on the Crabbies, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you no, know, I don't remember that. <laughs> but he, so. We lost the house. It got that bad. You yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we lost the house, and uh, then um, my uh, my dad was like, "I'm gonna go stay with my buddy for a bit, and then I'll figure it." And I was like, "Okay, whatever." You know, how old would you say your dad is at this time, too? By the way, um, do you have kids young? If I was, if I was, let's say I was 12 or 13, mm-hmm. it's probably. Close to like late forties, somewhere in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like and my mom were around the same age. I think it was like a year difference, but like, and he, uh, so he was in and out, and he would come by, and they'd worked out like visitation stuff, you know. Like, but it wasn't like it wasn't like if like you can't. It's not your day. Like, it wasn't that kind of like. But it was more like, dude, you're not doing shit. You're not contributing in any fucking way. Like, he was back on child support. He was back on all of this shit. Like, he just. Didn't have, he made a mess of everything. Like he told my mom he paid taxes one year, and just didn't. Do yeah, it. I think he might have done it more than one year. You know, shit. like yeah, shit like that. You know, and like well, my what's mom. That, like, do you remember having your house taken? Do you remember having yeah. to leave that home? Yeah, it was. It's weird. How old were you? We were roughly. I think I was thirteen. Yeah. Oh, so you're eighth grade. Yeah, 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 yeah you maybe remember that. twelve or three. Yeah, no, we were. Yeah, we were what, grown what, enough to know. We're not losing any memories from that time, sadly. It would have been nice to be, too. What are your parents telling you leading up to it? They go, uh, well, the, they go, um, I kind of don't remember what they told us about the house, but I knew we were leaving. Uh, and to their credit, they never dogged each other out to us. Like, not, never, like, to their credit, even though they both had barrels pointed at one another. Like, I really don't, like, my mom never... Maybe once, you know, she'd say something like, you're fucking fuck. But, like, that was – but she never got into too many details about it. And my father, 
uh, never did that with my mom either. So like really like maybe once or twice I remember like like snippy shit, not like details. But I knew we were losing the house because that was like I remember that the, being like the the point of the divorce, like the the like one of the reasons. And uh, you know it was like weird because like there was always money problem. We were always you know like. The phrase "we can't afford it" was like as common as "I love you" in my house, probably more so. You know, like yeah, 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 like yeah, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. Like okay, I guess I'll just go outside. You know, like and um, I remember like one time my mom was a night nurse, and my dad was like watching us, or he was with us one night, and he goes, and we were like eating like some shitty dinner, like soup and like you know like like nothing anyone would really looks forward to when they're 10 and he goes uh, he goes uh he goes uh you know we if you know normally i'd get us hamburgers but like your your mom took the checkbook away from me and i was like that's fucking emasculated as shit dude <laughs> you, like you know like and she should have you know like yeah. ma- but like it's like also like you're taking the house away from <laughs> us <laughs> Yeah, the IRS is. Yeah, the city's taking the house. Mom's taking the checkbook. I got no hamburgers. That's fucking terrible. Three kids, a wife, and and he was gambling like that. Yeah, and then like I don't know what he couldn't do with money. Right, you know, like I don't like I don't think he was a degenerate. Like I just don't know if he ever figured it out. You know, why don't you know? We just didn't. The family doesn't talk about that shit. Like we just never did. But like, I mean, like it's all died with them. You right. Know? Like, but yeah. I'm saying, you, do you not know because you lost complete touch at a certain point? Oh, and stopped no, seeing like, them or no? We can't. Like I made amends with my father. You did, day. yeah. Like later on in my like late twenties before okay. he died, we got to a place where I was like, "You're all right, but you you can you die fuck, now. Yeah, yeah. You can die. Just now. Fucking pull that shit out of the wall. <laughs> all right, I got one of these. But he. <laughs> Huh. Look at the old God <laughs> pat on the back. <laughs> Say out of Paw Paw for me. Um, it wasn't so like he wasn't a bad dude. He just couldn't do his shit. Like, and it's like, so he he was out, and he like I mean he coached our soccer teams when we were little. He tried to, he liked that shit, you know. But like he bet he on went, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> did he? <laughs> no, he, he fucking, probably. That's did. why we lost he the house probably. if he did. <laughs> My fat little legs and no lateral movement. <laughs> Uh, but he got out of the house and then like he was coming back around and then we kind of was in and out. And then I remember like he showed up one day in a, um, in his car and it was like filled with, and I've told this somewhere and his car was filled with shit. And I was like, what's going on? I guess you're moving, you know? And he had to move into a shelter. No. Uh, yeah. So like, I mean, he, he, really he, was yeah, yeah. And he like, like nobody, I think it was one of these things that like my grandparents were still around at this time. And my my and aunt, his parents yeah yeah okay. and my aunt was still around his sister at this time but like everybody was kind of tired of like I was gonna say that's tired of tough bailing. love right yeah, there. yeah yeah like and that's what it is you know like if you're going to a the, shelter man you yeah gotta, so you like, gotta I take fuck. care you gotta want you gotta love you yeah you've if got, you, I'm what I'm saying is some people obviously need them but if you're an able bodied person who could really it has a family and you're a handyman you get the fuck out there and make some money yeah he just didn't. Like, I, like, it's weird. I just don't think he knew how to do it. Like, 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 so, like, nobody was, like, and so I fucking uh, moved my dad into a shelter. You helped him? Yeah, yeah. I think he was, he came by the, I think he, he was feel like, if I'm being candid, I think he was being very, feeling very sorry for himself. And I get it. Like, if I had to move into a homeless shelter, I don't think I'd be, like. I can't uh, imagine my daughter having to move me into a homeless shelter. Yeah. I, I was mad about it for years. You know, I. Did you visit him there? Yeah. So once this is where this once is- or twice I moved. Like I tell this in a bit in the story, so I won't go through all of it. But like the the non humor part of it is like I think he was just like nobody's fucking helping me anymore. I'm alone. You know. I think he was just scared and alone. Mm-hmm. You know. Like and I'm like, but not scared enough to want to step up and do something. I don't about think he it. knew. Yeah, I think he couldn't figure out how to do feel everything at once. You know, mm-hmm. like. Uh, so we give him the shelter. I mean, I still, every time I'm home, I still drive by that shelter. Like, like on purpose. Like, I don't yeah. have to see, I go like, this is a fucking, be a worker. Like, you know, like, B 
be a fucking worker. You know, it's right Man, there. That's some fucking motivation. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that, it's still there. Yeah. And those people are still like, and we move them in there and uh, we get them in and it's like, it's a, his room is like not even the size of this. I was going to say describe it's So it's not this open. No, no. It's not like there is the way I recall it. And I hope I'm doing this right. It's over off Lancaster Ave in Fort Worth. And we go in, like, my dad goes, I'm supposed to ask for so-and-so. And the guy got the front goes, that's me. That's me. He goes, what are you looking for? My dad goes, I'm looking for a room. And he goes, there's a open cot, like, kind of like like a GI hall or something. You know, like where soldiers would sleep. It just feels like everybody's in there. Your shit's under your bed. And then there were, like, smaller rooms uh, upstairs. I think it's, like, three floors. And then um, you, like... What it was was like, imagine if there was a like a bunch of plywood across the wall of this room here, and you were on one side of it and I was on the other, but I could throw like my like there was like a space because the ceiling was high, right? So they basically just built dividers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was in there, and he was like, I mean, we just went in there. I put all of it went in there, put all of his shit in there, and. Uh, he was like sorting stuff, and he goes, uh, "Like go down the tar- car, grab some more shit." And I was like, "All right," you know. And I didn't care. Like I didn't feel like unsafe there. You know, like that's like a. I was sad. Yeah, well, you and were leaving, did, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just you were leaving. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get were me going the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. But <laughs> exactly, we were all homeless. <laughs> oh man. But I thought it was like. That's like a misconception about those places. Like, there's like rough people in there, but most people are just like fucking down on their luck, and they've gotten like they haven't gotten good hands played to them. So I get in, I go in the car, grab stuff, and this is it. I have a bunch of shit, and this guy like walks in the elevator, and he's like, "I'm by myself," and I'm like twelve or thirteen, and he goes, "You're kind of young to be moving in here alone," and I was like, "Oh no, I have a home." Like. <laughs> I didn't hear, like, I said, like, <laughs> shake my keys in. <laughs> it's got a yard. Yeah. But it was, like, one of these things that was, like, I didn't even mean it like that. Mm-hmm. But then my dad, like, called me a few months later, and he, like, got out of the shelter, and he moved in with that guy. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is, like, this is where it gets in the bit. But he moved in with that guy and another guy, and he couldn't stay there long. Like, it was wild, dude. Like, that how ha- Like, I was, like, you the shelter. You there? Yeah, because he got an apartment and like well, I just uh, love that you're always going to see. You never wrote him off to the point where you're like fuck it all together. Like nah, this I'm is too soft. I'm too soft for it. Yeah, yeah, like like in that space. But your mom did. Your mom was strong enough to be like, I'm divorcing you. Got to get you out of here. Yeah, yeah, like and not, and not like you'll never see these boys again. Right, shit, but, but you're like, not good on it. You're not doing like yeah. We're all drowning and you're putting your hands on our head even though you're just panicking. Like, mm-hmm. and that's like. So that's what she had to do. But, like, I mean, I remember his apartment that he moved into after that. You remember the, uh, in the wire, the apartments, like the flatland apartment? Like, it looked just like that, dude. Jesus. Like, Christ. Yeah, like it just run down to shit. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like the wire. You know what I mean? But it was like, it was poor. Nobody had money. Everybody, you know, like, this was like, all right, people are paying 200 bucks a month to live here. Let's just try and keep the needles off the ground. So, kid, like that, yeah, or whatever kind of shit it was. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't like violent, but it was like not nice. Like it was like shitty and run down and poor is what I would say. And then eventually he got out of there. And this is where it gets all weird. He fucking, he married a, my mom was an Irish nurse and he meets this woman. My dad kind of gets his gender and she was a Scotch Irish nurse. So he's like, got it. Like, yeah, he goes straight. One A to one B. He's got yeah, a tight, yeah, like, 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 yeah, tight, like, like, yeah, like Michael's not feeling it tonight. Give the ball to Scotty. And that woman lives three blocks from where my mom nah. got. Yeah, I swear to God, dude. My brothers, one lives in my mom's house and one lives in the house my dad. Had. <laughs> like, they're both. Yeah, I swear to like, were they're two blocks from one another? And that he definitely met this woman after. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, are yeah. you serious? That's wild. Yeah, yeah. My dad, I think my dad was like, well, this was the closest it came to working. Let's try it again. And then that, that marriage. And did it work? Uh, they died married, uh, I think. But I, I think they, it was like, they died together? No. Like, oh, I mean, like, like they. Gotcha. But I think their marriage was like one of these things of like, 
you're not in good health. I'm not in good health. We like liked each other at first. And now it's just kind of been in this place of like, well, let's see each other through. Like we'll each call someone. If the, we will call the hospital, like it wasn't, they slept in different rooms, you know, like, yeah, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember, I think I was like maybe 23 or 20. Yeah. Around 22, 23. Like I just turned like into the age where I was drinking and boozing a lot. And, uh, I lived back with him in that house for a few months. And what was that like? <laughs> Betsy, my stepmom, she was a nice lady, but man, she was fucking like just a weird, she's just a character. Like, like could not have been sweeter, but just be like, I remember one time I was like, we were trying to get to this place where like, I want to know about your health, dad. Like we were trying to get back there, you know? And they go in and <laughs> don't. <laughs> I was like, Take care of yourself. We were trying to get there. And uh, he goes, okay. He goes, you want to come to my doctor's appointment with me? And I go, yeah, yeah. No. He goes, Bessie's coming too. And I go, okay. And then uh, we're sitting in there. And then um, she just goes, t- that, so Simon, your sugars, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, and, and the doctor goes, any other questions? And Bessie goes, yeah, he's shooting blanks right now. So like, and I was, just, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't need to know everything. Like that's the kind of woman she was, dude. And I. I swear to God, I was like, I'm fucking moving out of this house. This is worse than the sh- <laughs> this is worse than the shelter. It was brutal. And dog, and when he died, he had a fu- he had a stroke, and I had to fly back to Oregon. And it was a, or from Oregon, it was like a whole fucking thing. It was brutal, and it was like days long, and everybody was like fighting about what to do because he was like incapacitated, and no one was gonna. He wasn't coming back. Like the doctor was just like kind of like. If he he'll live, but it's gonna be yeah yeah you're just on a machine yeah yeah, yeah pretty not much a person and then uh so he was there and um they moved me to hospice and they asked me to sign the paperwork because there was something missing and I wasn't like it was like my stepmom or my aunt were the two and my mom was there too like they got past it like she helped because she was a nurse. Uh, but I was the only one there, and the guy came up to me. He was like, "Hey, we need you to sign this paperwork." So when he and I was like, "Ah, fucking, I couldn't do it." Like I let it go. Like for yeah. all the shit, all the baggage I had with him, because we went in and out. I was like, I was like, I, I, I remember I called my mom, freaking out, and she was like, "Don't sign that fucking paper. Like you're not gonna forgive yourself." And then uh, I was there with my grandmother, and I can't remember who else was there. I think my little brother and maybe my my niece. And uh, I really can't remember, but I remember my grandma was, was was there, and he just he went, you know, and like it was just such a fucking bummer. We all go home, and the next day my stepmother calls me. And she goes, "Hey, your dad, you know, like was it good with money? I got to go take care of the stuff at the bank. Will you drive me over there?" It's like, "Yeah, I'll come get you right now." And we're like, "We'll plan the funeral, and like we'll do all this stuff." We go in the bank, and uh, the greeter at the bank goes, "How are we doing today?" And Bessie. <laughs> He just goes, I'm okay. My husband died yesterday and just walked right by. Him. And I was like looking at her. He's the, he ain't shooting blanks yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just good. the, the, the greeter uh, goes, what? He, she goes, oh, I'm doing all right. My husband died yesterday. She just walked straight up like I need to talk to someone. And he fucking like, I mean, they were in such debt and everything when he went. It was like such a fucking mess. But like, um, so that was it. Like he like just couldn't do it like i got there with him like we figured it out but i had like real fucking animosity letting us fucking twist in the wind for all the yeah. year yeah yeah if i asked you how many subscriptions you have would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying if you would have asked me this question before i started using rocket money i would have said yep but let me tell you i would have been so wrong i can't believe how many i had and all the money i was wasting Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. Rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. 
According to the CDC, fewer men than women meet the minimum daily intake recommendations for fruits and vegetables, and men are more likely to overvalue exercise and undervalue nutrition. Enter Ritual, a multivitamin scientifically developed for men to fill nutrient gaps in their diets. You've heard me mention on this podcast plenty of times how hard it is to eat right, especially when you're touring, running around. I've been using Ritual for years. Don't go get that trash at the gro- uh, drugstore or the grocery store. It's garbage. It's sawdust on those shelves, all right? Ritual is rigorously tested and validated by a third party for allergens, microbes, and heavy metals. Ritual works with world-class certification bodies to validate their products and their multivitamins are vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten, and major allergen-free, certified B Corp, and made traceable. Essential for Men is a quality multivitamin from a company you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash honeydew. Start Ritual or add Essential for Men to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash honeydew for 20% off. Now, let's get back to the do. And, uh, you were close. You have brothers, right? And mm-hmm. you were like close to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you had your and your dad died when you were younger. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you need that. I worry about that a lot. In this way of like, you need somebody there to like kind of walk you through it. A bit. Yeah. Like it's not easy. You know, like just figuring it out on your own. And we were young enough, and we all got in scrapes and messes and all that kind of stuff. Like, and we're fine. I think like we're decent, but it's like, dude, my little. My little nephew, like, he doesn't have any women in his life. His mom's passed on. My mom's gone. Like, I wonder what it's going to be like for him. Like, he's the sweetest kid in the world, and he's 12 now, you know. But I wonder what it's going to be like for him. Like, he needs to be around women to know how to be around women. You know, like, a little bit. And, like, be, like, and he's a good kid. I don't think he's going to be a a weirdo. Like, he just has good nature to him. But it's one of these things he's like, how do we, like, I did that, like, my mom, I think, like, she, you know, she kind of taught me how to be a man in a lot, the best, best way she could. But I wonder, like, how someone's going to, like, my nephew's going to have that kind of, like, foresight and learn how to, like, treat people and be like, when he doesn't have a lot of women in his life. And it's like, it's not his fault. And it's not wrong. My brothers are doing a good job with him. But it's like one of these things. It's like, you need to know. Like, you need this mo- role model there. You need somebody, yeah. Yeah, you, need a, you need somebody to show you, like, this is how we, like, I can't teach you everything because I don't know everything. I need other people around. And uh, so that was like, that was his thing. He just like, my dad was trying, like, I think he liked doing the little kid stuff, like soccer games and that kind of shit. But I don't think he liked, you know, when it gets, everybody gets a little older and hairier and you start taking longer showers and shit. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think think he was ready for that. Yeah. So what was mom like? Uh, She's a, she's my hero. So Yeah. 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 She, um, so she was an immigrant. She was from Ireland. She came here uh, to be a nurse, I think, 60s, maybe, 70s. Uh, real, t- like, hard work. Like, that kind of, th- like, really hard worker. Uh, night shift, like, labor and delivery and women's health. Like, it was important. That was, like, a big marker of her personality to be uh she was proud of being a nurse you know like so like very proud of it um she uh but in s- massive uh depression issues so like i think i remember one time we talked about it after like we were up for we were t- I was like asking her all these questions about like the day after my dad died. I was like up with her. We were just having a drink and like, and I was like, well, you know, I asked her everything. Like I was like, he's dying. I want to know this stuff. And I was like, did he ever cheat on you? And she goes, not that I'm aware of, which kind of is an answer that makes me think like maybe, but not, you know, like that kind of shit. And, uh, but my mom had like massive depression issues. So like she was in a haze for like, five years after like the divorce Is that like right? yeah like like worked her ass off and always loved us you know but like my brothers would get in tr- like wild shit and trouble and she's like a to be fair to my brother like anytime they got caught like would they got both got expelled and they did all this stuff so, like anytime they got caught with something my mom was from a town a village of like 200 people in ireland so like if somebody had pot 
it it was like Jesus, Mary, and like my my it's eternal damnation, Catholic kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't want to say she overreacted, but she I don't think she made it easy on people when they fucked up. So like, uh, but she just like she worked so fucking hard. Man. What'd she do? She was a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Just nurse only. I mean, was yeah. she doing night jobs too? No, like no, no, no. Jobs? Like it was weird. Like she would work the night shift because my brother, my older brother, got kicked out, and you know, like, and then it was like, and then I think my younger brother was like, if I remember correctly, was like staying with my dad for a bit, or maybe my like it was just like shit. Like so they were at always. I at was the easier to. I was yeah, yeah, and I was easier to get along with. Like I didn't get in <clears throat> much trouble with consequence. You know, but my brothers were were fairly wild. I think and they had a reputation. So, did she ever remarry or have a boyfriend? Or she anything dated like one that? guy for like three dates, and she was like, "I'm not doing this shit again." Ever. Oh, you guys, yeah, like you she, didn't chase him away. She sh- she no, said she was no. like, "Fuck." We, I wanted her to like. It, like yeah, it made me sad. Like I, I don't think. Uh, because I remember one time I was like, "Do you ever want to do that?" You know, like as I got a little older, and she goes, "It's just not worth the trouble to me." And I was like, and it made me so fucking sad, dude. Like, because she was great. Like, so I, th- I, th- I, w- I thought some she deserved to be with somebody. Yeah. But yeah. I think she, I think that's the thing her and my dad had in common more than anything. They both had their hearts broken so many times that they just couldn't fucking do it anymore. You know, like, it, it fucked her up real good and proper. Like, and then, so she would work night shift. And that's like when it started getting pretty, like, like, it wasn't wild. Like, what's night shift? Is it overnight? Seven like, p to seven a. Like, okay, seven, so, so you seven, guys are no, taking, like, yeah. you're taking care of yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. And like, and to her credit, she was like, "Look, this is just the way it is." Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and to her credit, there's she three was, of you too. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. and like, uh, and it was like she just goes like, "This is the way it is," and like, you know, like more than once she'd be like, "There's other moms in this situation who don't have a job as good as mine." Like, she was like. You know, like it's a very Irish mentality to be be grateful for what you got, even if it's not a lot. You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, so she like she fucking do the night shift, bring in babies every night. You know, like, and we would like. That's when you like, and, and that's like a rough t- like we're fourteen. That's the house you can go to and get fucked up at night. You know, like if she's gone, you know, and a couple times like she came home from work early and it was like a <laughs> fucking Armageddon, dude. It was <laughs> so scary. She goes crazy. She, oh, she was like, "Get the fuck out of my!" She was like, "Just and then like, I remember one time my brother like was like, "Why are you doing?" Like, I couldn't believe he was standing up. I was like, "You're wrong!" Like, yeah, you're yeah, wrong. what? Just fucking take the L, you know? But I mean, she just, I think she was going through so much, and she would see like us like smoking pot or drinking beers was like, I'm doing all of this to keep a roof over our heads. There's a fucking massive amount of debt on the roster like we may not be able to keep this credits play. probably yeah fucked. yeah shit like that dude like yeah. bankrupt like you know like she had to borrow money from people to get straight and like because to her credit like my dad fucked us we lost the house on country manor then my mom found a really rundown house two blocks away and she was like i gotta get money together to get this like down payment on this house like she went to my dad's parents they gave her a cash loan. Hold up. Yeah. You guys went from the nice house two blocks away to the yeah, it's like, shittier house. Yeah. And you had to drive by that house all the time. Too. Yeah. It's my, it's my elementary school still on that street. Oh, God. I don't. Do you ever say, have people say shit in here and you're like, oh, that is a big deal. Like, <laughs> to fucking drive and then, by and then my dad where Happy a, used to yeah, live. Yeah, yeah dog, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, that yeah. sucks. I mean, I. I relate in the sense that when my mother left our family, she didn't leave the state or anything. She went like a mile and a half away. It's insane. You can that's see them insane. at the grocery that's store. What we, that's what I say all the time. Dude. We're running into you at the store. Oh, come on. Yes. Like if you're going to fucking leave, commit and get, get the, the fuck, fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. But this is. It's, it's Maryland, a- not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a toe in the pool kind of thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like they're half in. Mm-hmm. And. So wow, you're driving by your Drive old by house every day. all the time, and your poor mom's got to borrow money from the man who put you all in this. My dad or her, her, his parents. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Borrow money from the man who his his folks, their my, kid, yeah. put you yeah. in this situation. Yeah, and he fucking. And I remember, like, I didn't know how we got in the house. 
like, and I didn't think about because I was twelve. I was like, I guess we, this is where we live now, or we're renting it, you know. And it was a fucking dump. Uh, and like she rebuilt, she did all of it. She, she got it back together. She was like, uh, but like I remember, I, like my grandparents weren't really in either. Like that, you know, we weren't seeing anybody. Like we were just kind of like my mom was like taking care of all of us. I was, I think there was a thing of like my grandparents and my aunt were like, well, he, you know, he's our son, he's my brother. We have to side with him, but this is. They gave. They didn't give her the money. She got the money from them to pay it back, and, she and was, I'm sure there's no child support or anything. Coming he in. like, dude. I, she was like, she told me once, and I don't know why I remember this number. She goes, "I'm asking for a hundred dollars a month for each of you." So three hundred, like you know, twenty five bucks a week. Yeah, and he was like, and he fucking was not hitting it some months. <laughs> like, yeah, that's eight bucks a pop dude, for, dude, oh, for the kids. This I mean, the, this is Struthers yeah. kind of shit, like cup of coffee a day shit. But he just he didn't have it. He couldn't Man. figure it. Yeah, like we just took a beat, and so like, and it's not like here's the there thing. was no support for her outside of like yeah, and, and outside of like other Irish nurses she worked with, and any support she's watching decline. He's yeah. going from homes to homeless shelter to you know yeah, it's, and like. It's like you know, and he no came back through. Time. He got through it eventually to where he got to a no, not really, but like he had his moments where he kind of would get back on the bike. But yeah, but for himself, yeah, he's not no, helping your mom. No, and no, you he guys. like, I mean, like, not helping his family. No, like, I mean, he got there a little bit, but it was like he married that woman. And that's kind of how he was helping us through. Yeah, or, yeah her shit. Bring somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do this yeah. again. That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, don't let her know the root. Like, we're gonna run the Cincinnati dice game on her one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but. So there's no support there. And uh, we didn't know. You know, we were like fucking just had hair under our armpits. Like, what are we supposed to do? You know, like, we want to go see, I want to go see bands. I want to be this kind of person. And she just, there was no money for it. And I remember like one time I went to see my grandparents and I hadn't seen them in fucking like, it felt like years. And they like, uh, my, and it was my dad was like back in the picture for a bit at this. And, uh, I go over and they're like, how are you getting so big and all this stuff? And I, in my head, I was like, well, fucking, you might notice that if like you'd been around, like, fuck y'all. Like, I like, and I love my grandparents, but like, there was this thing of like, well, you come to us, you're our grandkids, you're supposed to be obedient, which is like, there's a, there's a logic to that, but like the whole world's falling apart and it's not easy for me to get a ride an hour away to come, you know, like they put a lot of responsibility on us that I don't really think was fair for well, big kids. Well, I mean, if they're not going to put the same responsibility on their own son, then why put it on kids? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's a grown-ass man right there. Yeah. Like, we got to side with them, do yeah. you? Yeah. Do I mean, you? they love them. It's just what love does to you. You know, like, you never really abandon your kids, no matter how much they fuck up, you know? But I went over there. I have a vivid memory of this, man. I went over there, and it was, like, not – um, not tense, like nobody was mad, and you know, like, and I, I didn't know really how to feel when I was going in there. And they were like, It's good. My grandmother was a sweet woman, but I think she might have been fairly, um, it's not a good word to use, but like obedient to what my grandfather wanted. And like, we're there, and they go, We have, uh, how are you? And I was like, Everything, you know, mom's okay, blah, blah, blah. And they're catching up, and he comes out, and he has a, a crown royal bag, but there's not a bottle in it. And he goes, Um, uh, hey, your mother gave me all this stuff. And I guess she didn't have the money to pay him on the schedule she wanted. It's just all this, like, like family rings and stuff from she brought over, from, like, jewelry. And she was like, you can give this back to her. I don't need this stuff. And I was like, you fucking give it back. To, like, I don't, like, there was, like, this, like, thing of, like, I don't know why I need to be the messenger in this shit at all. Because I'm 14. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm not saying I'm too young to do that, but it is one of these things of, like, you're making this way more dramatic than it needs to be. And all this woman is trying to do is like, you know, like give you like, this is worth money. I don't have cash right now. This is a brooch from my, from her mom. Like there's because something of here. Your son. Yeah, yeah. Like this kind <laughs> of shit because of your son. And I'm fucking yeah. like dealing this shit. And I'm like, yeah, it's tough. and then I have to go give my mom the bag and I'm like, Hey, grandpa gave me this, you know? And he's like, and that guy had no skills either. Like, like he knew how to be a hard worker, but he's like, Fucking, he went into, he lied about his age to go to World War II because his house was so bad growing up. So, like. Damn. Yeah, like. Think about that. Yeah, like, so that's the kind of thing, you know, like, they don't have skills. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like, 
I probably I don't think I'll have kids at this point. Like I'm a little How old are you? I'm forty two. But when did you have your little girl? Forty one. Yeah. Forty, forty one. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not over. Yeah. I, and I, maybe I will, but and I Do you and, want them? I want them with the right person. I don't just want them. Like sure. like I know that. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, they didn't my dad didn't have certain skills and my grandfather didn't have certain skills. Like and he was like, but I don't think like my I don't think my grandfather took the belt to my dad as much as his dad took it to him and like the ship is going in the right direction in some ways and in it's a generational change a lot of the time with like that kind of shit. So you know, I think I think I might be able to do some of the things that they were bad at if I had a kid that they were really bad at better than them, but that's because of the you know, the mistakes they made. Like I learned from those too. So they don't have it. Uh they just could never nail that shit. Like they just didn't have the No one taught them how to do it and they didn't know what to do with it. So they just pushed they pushed it pushed down. it down or like and I have like a lot of that. Sometimes I don't want to think about a problem anymore. I don't need it solved. I just need to not. I need it. Uh, I don't need to know why I'm doing it mm-hmm. or why I have these problems. And sometimes, sometimes I'm just so I still, fucking sometimes beat you up don't, by it. I'm, yeah. like, I'm exhausted by it. I'm like, sometimes you don't know why. Can it just stop why? hurting? I don't have to fix yeah. it, but can it just stop You don't stop need hurting? to know why everything happens. Yeah. It's a fucking beat. So yeah. tell me about your mom. You said both your parents are gone. What happened to your mom? Um, It was five, six years ago. Uh, give me a second. I was home. I was working a club in Fort Worth. I took the gig because it was uh, her birthday week. She still lived in Fort Worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I came home, work a club, uh, and I took the gig just to work the weekend, like, and be close to, like, to be close to her on her birthday. We do it. It goes great. Like, we go to dinner. And I remember I took her to this place called LRB's on Magnolia because she became a nurse. She eventually went back and got a nurse practitionership, which was more money. And like to celebrate, like she was like, I'm not cooking Christmas dinner this year, but let's go to a nice dinner. She took us to this place and it was really great. You know, like, so I took her there years later for like That's a birthday. Nice. Yeah. And uh, I remember she, um, she's like, you sure you don't want to stay at the house? I was like, nah, it's like the hotel is close. I don't have to commute and all this stuff. And she goes, okay. And she drops me off the hotel. I go to the shows and I'm doing shows all weekend and I'm like, I'll spend Sunday with you, you know, like Saturday and like Saturday night in between uh, shows and my mom, my brother tells me, Hey, mom's not doing good. He, Cause I'm going to take her to the hospital. And I was like, all right. Can't, like, let me know. Like I'm at work. I'll come wherever, you know? And he goes, she's back at home. She's doing okay. And I was like, cool. And then, so I go to sleep. That night, I had like too many drinks that night. And uh, next morning, I just woke up with like emails, just like, not emails, texts, just like fucking mom's at the hot, mom, like, get your ass here. So I fucking bolt over to the hospital that she was at, and my brothers are there. And we're like, what's going on? She had something with her stomach. And, uh, and this is just out of nowhere? Yeah. My mom was like in relatively okay, good so, health for a woman her age. You know, right? like, like yeah. she wasn't too heavy. She wasn't none of that shit. You know, like, this solid. isn't some decline. No, piece. she'd had like a stomach surgery before, mm-hmm. but it was like not a fucking emergency, you know, like, and we we're all like, okay. And we go in there and we're like, we're telling her we love her and all this kind of shit. And we're like, the doctor seemed calm. So I don't remember a sense of urgency from the very get go. And, uh, she went in, we like, we said, a. Uh, she was Catholic. I am not Catholic. We do the Our Father, that kind of thing. She goes in. Doctor comes out and it's like she made it through. Everything's good. like got it. No issues. And I was like, and we're like fucking. Thank what God. was it? Got it. What did it? It was mean? like um. She had a hardening of her intestine, if uh-huh. I remember correctly. So like, she wasn't digesting. So I think that was causing blockages. I see. And uh, she. So they had to remove part of it and then like sew it back up, I think is if I have it right. Uh, but it was something with their stomach, something like that. And fucking, they go, we're going to keep her in this area for a little bit. Then we're going to move her upstairs. Then she'll be like, she's going to come out of anesthesia. And we're like, great. And then we can like get her home and we just got to be around to like 
you know, give her a, a fucking, it's like, see her through this. And I was like, right. And uh, I remember, man, she just fucking, and this was in a hospital, like, she had worked in and, like, delivered babies in. And uh, she just wasn't coming out of it the way they want. Like, she was, there was some consciousness, but more or less, she was, like, fairly comatose. Like, and this went on for, like, a month. Whoa. Yeah. Because her birthday was on the 7th. And she went in on the 10th. And then she died on the 20th of January. So, like. We were like fighting, sorry, man. Dude. Like, so the, like her, she never really came out of the anesthesia completely. Yeah, Is like that not what completely. It was? Yeah, like, yeah. Never like, became just herself like, again. Yeah, like it was like she talked a little bit, you know. But like, and there's times where it like seemed like she was doing good, and the fucking peaks and valleys of it were like. And what do they explain? That, that well, is? I'm like yelling at doctors. I'm yeah. Like, well, what the fuck? Like, tell us something. And they're like, we don't know. They have like. A virologist, like all these different kinds of doctors coming through it. And I remember like making a plan of like, it's because one doctor would be like, well, we don't think it's like, you know, we don't think it's um intestinal anymore. And we're like, okay. And we, so they'd be like, maybe it's the vi, it's maybe it's vibe. Maybe there's a bag. Like and it was always one of these things. And we're like, and they kept going, well, we have to see what the next person says. So I was like, well, one of you needs to fucking say something. This is insane. And I remember, like, I had to, like, I bought a bunch of different colored post-it notes because it was so confusing. I couldn't keep it all in my head. And I'd be like, all right, blue is what we're going to ask this doctor. Green is what we're going to ask this doctor. And, like, so on and so on. I was like, and I just put it up on the wall. And then it was like, it. at least, I don't know if it was a good, it made me feel like I was doing something in a comp, like, moving in the right mm -hmm. direction. And that was a really big peace of mind for me because, like, um, we couldn't stay at the hospital for, like, like, for a little bit, we had to stay in the, like the waiting room or something like that. Like, and then they had to like she just wasn't fucking waking up, man. It was awful. And like her friends, this is like one of the only times I fucking laughed this whole month. All of her friends were Irish, English, and Scottish nurses. Like they all, when Fort Worth was becoming a bigger city, they recruited medical professionals from the UK. Oh, is that so right? Like, that's like that's why some of them are there. Not okay. all of them, but like sure. some of them. So like all of these Irish, English, and Scottish women came over. Young nurses met these Texas guys, all married. All their husbands died before they came to this country together, and they're all leaving together. They've all put their husbands in the ground, and like they came in, and they were all like fucking. And I think my mom was like maybe the first one of them to go, and uh, they were all like crying and like you know like that. But it fucking, they were also all like my mom was like lifeless, and but they were all bickering. Over my mom's like my mom's more or less in a vegetative state, and they're like, "That's not how that hot happened, Carmel." Like they're just going back and forth. Fucking one of my mom's best friends lit a cigarette inside. No, -uh. yeah, she goes, and they're like looking at her. She goes, "Well, I worked here when we sold them." <laughs> like, like <laughs> well, we yeah, them, yeah, like yeah. she's just like they they're too old to give a fuck. Their husbands are dead. Nobody's gonna tell them anything. They mm -hmm. can, you know. And it was like it was kind of like there was some continuity in seeing them like still be there for each other at the end of this. And they weren't all close anymore and they wouldn't it wasn't all roses, but they did so love each other. What was the cause of death? What they, did they like complications of surgery, bullshit like but she fucking That's just it. Like they were like we she was old. And and like I mean like my brother like got a lawyer and was like we're not just letting you say like she was old. You know, like and, and I mean that's that's what that? that's what what it was. Like she did it was like her body gave out. Like it was time you know like it was too much oh was she 72 or 73 it was i think it was too intensive a surgery to come for back some, from, from yeah and she like she was in and out i remember like the fucking oh the last thing she ever said to me was like i'll never work again which she, yeah that that the last thing i remember her saying to me Man. truly yeah so and then like we moved like i remember i had to like I wasn't supposed to be gone from New York for a month. You know, like it wasn't, I was supposed to be like working. So I was in Texas, like flying, moving all these flights around trying and canceling all these tour dates. My sh shout out to my old uh, agent, TJ. He found me every, he put me in every club in Texas he could that was within a two hour flight. 
like, because he thought I, like, we thought she was going to recover and I would just have to be coming home a lot. But uh, she was, like, going. I was like, all right, it was like, I don't know, like, maybe the second weekend of the year. I was like, I have to go make money. I flew up to Portland to do the gigs. Then I had to, I was going to fly to New York because my lease was up. So I had to move into my new apartment. And then I was like, I'll come back a couple of days. So I'd do the weekend, get a little break from freaking out about all this stuff. Just work, work, work. And then I fly to New York. As soon as I lay, my brother goes, you got to call me right now. And uh, and I go, what's up? And he goes, the doctors want to do like a, a call. Like mom's brain is gone. Like she's not coming out of it. And like, I go, okay, we jump on the call. I get into New I red eyed to New York, get in, move all of my shit out of my apartment, into my new apartment, take a call with them. They're like, she's not going to come out of this. Like, and they're like, we're going to, you need to get here. So then I jump on a flight, fly down to Texas that night. We go, like, she's in hospice. And I don't know what hospice is, what exactly what it was, but it was like, we get in. And then, uh, yeah, she went like five or six hours later. She did? Yeah. You were there? Yeah. That's nice. At least you got to be there for that. <sighs> Would you rather you weren't there? No. I mean, I wish I wish I never saw it. Yeah. But. You actually did go in the room. Yeah. We, as we said, yeah. we set it out. Yeah. It's, it's weird because like we were in there and we were like, it's grim. So, you know, you're talking and laughing and you're doing like whatever you can like we're like this sucks and my brothers and i are in there and then the nurse comes in where i'm like i don't want to be morbid but like how long does this take you know like and they go it can be days you know like i saw people have party in here last week you know and then she went and they just like you kind of see the moment like because like she would like move like kind of like and then you just see it come and it's like fuck Exhausting. That's brutal, dude. You're making yeah. me fucking have flashbacks now. I remember when, um, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry you didn't nah. deal with that. I remember Appreciate I stayed it. home. My my grandmother had a heart attack in front of us, and I stayed back with the paramedics and uh, fire department and police to, to give the report while my brother rode in the ambulance with her to go to the hospital, and she didn't make it. And <sighs> When we get to the hospital, they tell us that we can come back and see her. Yeah. But we know the last time I saw her, she was alive. She wasn't doing well, but she had collapsed in front of me, but was alive. Yeah. And I'm giving her CPR. That's your now, father's mom? Yeah. Yeah. But she was like our mom. Our mom split from the family. Yeah, she did, so the, she she did the rearing. Yeah. And now we got to go back and see her. And I just remember, it's just, you know, it's personal to you. Yeah. You and know, it's a weight, you know, like. It's a personal to you. But also, they're in a hospital where they deal with this shit all day long, and she's on a gurney with a sheet over her. I'll never forget. I don't know why they did this. It was up to her neck like this, so her head's out. But they left the fucking mouthpiece in her mouth where they would do the yeah, CPR. The yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck? It just looks yeah. cold. Yeah. It and looks it's like, like an apple stuffed in my grandmother's yeah, mouth. Like, I it. felt like that, like you fucking Again, piece pritch. of shit. Yeah. Like, and you're telling us to come back and see this. Like, yeah. whoops, we left that yeah. and fuck off. I had a, f you're so, and it's a human mistake. Like, it is. It, and, and, it's, and it's fucking careless yeah. and stupid and shitty. But I'm like, you're so mad about that shit, so too. Mad. Like, because also, Especially it's if like, you're how are you going to do that to my grandma and disrespect yeah. my grandma? Yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? You want to fuck You still want to protect this person and, yeah. and, and they're gone. They're yeah. not even there. And my fucking brothers and I, like, we almost muscled out. Of, my mom was Catholic, and they, we need to bring somebody in for last rites. Mm -hmm. And we bring this priest in, and he, like, comes in, and he does this thing. I remember he says this shit. He goes, because, you know, she was, like, in and out, of, mostly out of consciousness, just, like, laying there. But, like, was responding very rarely ever so often. And this priest comes in, and he goes, uh, Kate, uh, what I need you to do now is, like, uh, my, I'm father so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. He goes, what I need you to do now is think of all the uh, sins you may have committed. And, all. and, I, and I, I, like, right then I was like, this motherfucker. Like, all she did was bring babies into this world. The thing you guys give the biggest fuck about. And, 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 and when they're about eight, nine years you know, old, you, you fuck them. Yeah. You fuck them. And in this building, like, you know, like, 
And he's just being a prick. Like he's also doing, she's dying. Don't put negative. Uh, yeah, thoughts she, on her like, think about all the head. things she did in this place. Guilt and carry over. Yeah, it's like the and, fuck out of here. Yeah, and then my brother and I were like looking at him, and he wrapped it up fucking quick. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, because it was like, like what he said was like, like right he's just doing room. the thing he's told to do the way he's supposed to do it. It's his fucking indoctrinated bullshit. And I know he doesn't mean it like, oh, you are a bad person. Like, but it's like. Hey, fucking pull your head out of your ass yeah. for a moment. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Read the I absolve, room, absolve this fucking dick. Like, I did like, and he left and we were like, you know, like, I was like, fuck this guy forever. Fuck this church for like already that way. But like, and it was a human mistake on his part. I don't, it's the same thing as the mouthpiece. Like he's saying it and he's not thinking about like, it's routine to him for some degree, but it's also like, fuck you, yeah. you dude. Like, that's not. Yeah. Go into the good on this. Like, so, but I mean, and I was also so mad that whole month. Right. Like, That's what yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, anger and rage. And I was like, I mean, if I wasn't staying at the hospital, like in the waiting room, if it was one of my brother's shifts, I would like go straight. To, once they let it, I had to leave. I'd, I'd go straight to the gym and I'd go run for like and lift. And then in this shitty part of town, and there was this dumb fucking bar called Yups, and I would go drink at that bar. And then I would like go home and do it. Like, dude, that was like my, th- I, would, I remember I was like clocking in. I'd leave the hospital, clock out, go to the gym, run, clock in, go to the bar, like, you know, like, and like, there's, I'm sure there was other shit in there that I do not remember, you know? Well, how do you celebrate your mom now? Um, you have pictures of her around your home? I have a uh, memento. I got, my that oh that's very nice yeah. yeah yeah and then um i have a couple of letters she wrote so to you or yeah like uh well i have one so when i moved to oregon like i was fucking really broke at points and like doing the whole thing like out of money like just scrapping by however i could and i had to call her and ask for money one time and it was a fucking and she just, she goes, um, I can pay it on Friday. Like, I'll send you some money on Friday. You know, like, it'll be there soon. You know, and I was like, okay. And I remember it was like, uh, she was like, I'm going to give you 200 bucks. And I was like, that'll get me, like, that'll get me through. Like, I can do it. I just got to, like, buckle down. And she fucking, uh, she mailed me the money. And uh, and she goes, the, the, the note was like, here's 180 I had to pull 20 out for gas, and I was like, it's fine. You know, like, and I could tell she felt bad. And then she gave me her um, her wedding ring. I, she didn't know what to do with it, like... Let's see. I just want to say, like, come or something right now so I can break this up. <laughs> I can't. I'm like, this is not my shit. <laughs> I just was like, like, who's gay? Or what are you like? <laughs> who's gay? Oh, dude. <laughs> I had to get that. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, I still have the letter. You but it was the ring? Yeah. You do. I didn't sell it. Got close a couple of times, but, yeah, it's... um. Still got it locked up. Uh, but you know, she was just like, I never I could never figure out what to do with uh with uh this ring, you know, like I see I'll never wear it again and I didn't want to like give it away or you know, like and she goes and then she just wrote, she's like uh, I th- the best thing it can do for me is give you a little peace of mind. So sell it if you need to sell it. Whatever. So, and it, it seems weird because like she doesn't want it anymore, you know. Oh, she doesn't have it. Yeah, but she also didn't want it, you know. Like, and I still couldn't sell it. So I don't. It's know. her ring, right? Yeah, like it's her I mean, wedding. She wore it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touched her body. Yeah, make a necklace out of it. I knew someone. That, I mean, I don't Give know. It to your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> the one you got time, bro. Yeah. You got time. But I didn't. I c- couldn't ever really quite figure what to do with it. So I have the ring. 
and like a couple other things. Don't but, sell it. Yeah, I, I'm I'll telling never you right sell. now from a dude that tried to sell an engagement <laughs> ring back, bro. It ain't worth it. Just keep it. Um, we just decided it's not big keep enough. It. <laughs> like, just like, uh, we want to go fancy. He'll be like, I had to take 20 out for games. <laughs> dude, Shane Torres, thank you oh, for coming on for here. Me, man. That was heavy. Episode. That was good, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you. On, Let, yeah. Thank, thank you for, you for everything. Up. Yeah, thank you for everything. Of course, yeah. please. Um, one mm-hmm. more time, plug him. Wait. I'm going to ask you a question first that yeah. I always ask everyone's first time, and then we're going to plug and promote everything yeah. again. Um, after everything we've talked about now, advice you would give to 16-year-old Shane Torres? Oh, man. Um, advice? Uh, punk rock will save your life. And uh, be clean. Girls like that. <laughs> like, that's, that's good like, advice. Yeah, because boys are so advice. fucking gross. With it. <laughs> and then, um, if you work hard and you make a plan, everything's going to be all right. But you have to do both of those things. If you, yeah, that's what I tell myself. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, yeah. great advice. All yeah. right, plug and promote everything again, please. Uh, the Blue Eyed Mexican on YouTube. Um, that is December tenth on Burt Crasher's YouTube channel, as well as Shane Torres's YouTube channel. Um, Shane is a comedian dot com for all my tour dates and Shane Torres on Instagram. I'm everywhere. If if you I if I'm not coming to your town, I'm probably not more than an hour away. I'm on the road a lot. So come see it. Uh and it's a whole new hour that I'm doing now. So it's not what you'll see on the special when you watch it. So you'll have another barrel of laughs and Oh my God, this is like you should call this thing trauma brigade. <laughs> <laughs> I did not I dude, I fucking steeled myself up the day before I was like, you're not gonna fucking you know, they're punching the heavy bag. No, and shit yeah, dude, out. I'm like, I fucking, I'm not, you know, God damn it, man. Thank you got, you, you're good at this. You're very good. I, I, you listen, all I did was ask questions. Yeah, you, yeah. you were the one that did everything. God, you did yeah. the heavy lifting, bro. <laughs> yeah. This was great, man. I really, really appreciate you having me. And like, sincerely, it's nice to see how well all this is going. Like, I knew things were on the up for you when I ran into you in Tampa before. Like, yeah, I knew, like, I knew the yeah. podcast was doing well. And like, the stand, but like, I mean, it was, Tampa was fucking packed, dude. Like, it was. Yeah, that like, was it was awesome. It was very cool to see. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like. It was nice. Because you fucking, like, I mean. I was surprised. Dude, look, well, you, you we churn like and churn. So. We sold out three of them, and I think we missed the other one by, like, 20 tickets. Yeah, I got the last one. I was like, if that was the light one. Yeah, that then, was the then light one. Then your wallet was packed all weekend, dude. Bro. Like, yeah, you had it. Thank yeah. you, Tampa. Yeah. Come see me on tour at Ryan Chicken Nuggets com. line killed me. <laughs> that, that's the one I remember. That's the one <laughs> I remember. You, yeah. Thank you. yeah, thank you, man. Um, as always, Ryan Sickler, all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm-hmm.